tú eras negra, negra, tenías ojos de color, pero mi papá era negro de los más ojos. Welcome to Nacimiento de los Negros, Mexico, which translates to Birthplace of the Blacks. We'll start today's video with showing you some of the day activities, followed up by two interviews with individuals from the area, and then on to the night activities, and show you how they celebrate on Juneteenth. located is about a four hour drive from Monterrey, Mexico, or a three hour drive from the Texas Eagle Pass border crossing. Today, a lot of people with family ties to this area actually reside in Texas. And on June 19th, those on both sides of the border come together to celebrate family, culture, and the unique history of the Muscogo tribes. So let me show you how they celebrate Juneteenth and give a brief history in their own words. What is the difference between los uh, Afroamericanos, Oaxaca, Guerrero, and Veracruz? Y aquí? What is the difference? Mira, tenemos una muy buena amistad y buena comunicación con los hermanos de la Costa Chica. No quiero mentir que, que en mi respuesta, pero yo creo que, que nosotros la diferencia es que nosotros los negros más pobres llegamos huyendo de la esclavitud y como llegamos huyendo de la esclavitud llegamos siendo libres. Cuando nosotros, cuando nuestros antepasados llegaron a México eran libres. Llegaron en familia. Entonces, yo creo que esa es la diferencia de mejor de otras comunidades. Que nosotros podíamos decir quién es mi abuelo, quién es mi bisabuelo, quién es mi tatarabuelo, porque ellos llegaron en familia. Entonces, nosotros tenemos como un registro de las primeras personas que llegaron y, como eran familias, creían sus propios cantos que utilizaron para despedirse de su mamá o de su familia que no podía venir. También tenían su propia religión que no, no implicaba tener imágenes religiosas, ni tampoco tipo de restos. Lo que se pasó ahorita, eso no había. Eso llegó con el mestizaje con los blancos. Nosotros era más ir a compartir los alimentos a la iglesia, eh, cantar los cantos que ellos traían para recordar a los que dejaron allá, platicar, tomar algo de bebidas que pudieran hacer que su cuerpo se relajara y compartir los sueños, porque ellos se dirigían en algunas ocasiones que si soñé algo podía pasar, o era algo bueno o era algo malo. Eso era, creo que esa es la diferencia eh, con nuestros hermanos de la costa, chico, o de la costa. Eh, ofrezco disculpas a los hermanos de por allá, si estoy cometiendo algún error o estoy equivocada en, la respuesta, en esta respuesta que estoy dando. Y otra pregunta es, normal, ¿la vida es mejor ahora o mejor antes? Todo depende como lo quieras ver. Antes no teníamos tantas cosas. No teníamos, por ejemplo, carretera, no teníamos electricidad, no teníamos tampoco agua entubada, teníamos letrinas, no teníamos eh, bin split, no teníamos todos camionetas. 
pero todos estaban mucho más tranquilos y más felices. No había competencia, podían los niños andar libremente descalzos, ahora no, todos quieren zapatos de marca. Antes eh, no había teléfonos, o sea, no había ese tipo de problemas, no había competencia con, con nada. Solamente comíamos lo que era orgánico porque eh, mamá tenía gallinas, tenía chivito que criaba, tenía el marrano, eh, las calabazas que se cosechaban el maíz, no había como productos procesados, eh, no había refrescos, por ejemplo, era mucho menos, eh, no había fritos, no había tal, eh, eh, en los dulces, el pan, se, con un refresco se tomaba como en una fiesta, como cuando un domingo, por ejemplo, podías tomar un refresco y compartirlo con tus amigos, pero no era de todos los días después de regresos a día. Sí, había mucha diferencia. Por ello creo que mis antepasados duraban más vivos porque no tenían diabetes, no tenían azúcar, no tenían colesterol, no tenían nada. De acuerdo a su alimentación. Y, uh, y si puedes cambiar un cosa en México, ¿qué cambia? Cosa. En México general. Dos, cambia dos, México y aquí. Uh, en México general cambiaría la alimentación. Cambiaría, yo digo que se pusiera más estricto respecto a la delincuencia o la violencia que hubiera. Eh, creo que eso haría yo. Pero, y aquí en la comunidad me gustaría mucho más que fuera mucho eh, comer más orgánico, no comer tanto refresco, enseñarles a los niños los usos de las herramientas que, que tenían en el pasado, enseñarles que podemos comer de silvestre, que podemos cosechar, sembrar en nuestro huerto, en nuestra casa. Creo que eso les enseñaría a los niños de aprovechar la leche eh, en todo. Creo que yo haría muchos cambios si yo pudiera para mi comunidad, principalmente con la alimentación, para evitar la obesidad, la, eh, de ahí la diabetes y cuántas otras enfermedades que hay, y se prolongara más la vida. All right, so she wants us to uh, get a picture of her, and she's taking me out here. She wants to get one with the the horse. So I don't. This camera is more set up for a video, but we'll get out here and get one with. <laughs> you got it. There you go. Pero la mamá no es tan negra como usted, igual que yo. Pero la mamá, la mamá mía no era negra, negra, tenía los ojos de color. Pero mi papá era negro de los más ojos. Ok, ¿qué cosas es difícil aquí en esta comunidad? ¿Eh? En esta comunidad, ¿qué cosas es difícil? Todo, todo aquí es uh, bien. Uh, no, ustedes tienen un, un castigo, una comunidad. Creo que muy bien. Muy bien. Creo que muy bien, porque ambos lados, ustedes y Estados Unidos, siempre. No hay, aquí no hay problema, no hay nada. Sí. Tranquilo. Y porque hoy muchas personas que yo en Estados Unidos construimos y este es muy lindo, muy, 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 muy lindo. Así nomás cuando hay problemas, cuando no llueve, que no hay agua. So some of the problems here, like the problem here is when it doesn't rain. It doesn't rain for nine months. So like you, what, you speak English, right? No, no, muy poquito. Yeah, but but that's the that's the problem here that when it doesn't uh, rain, a lot of these people depend on agriculture and uh, cows. So a lot of the cows they need grass, and you're gonna have to have uh, rain. So that's the problems that they are. Uh, 
facing and ahora nueve meses no lluvia, ¿sí? No. ¿Hasta, hasta cuántos años uh, no lluvia? I mean, ¿Hasta cuántos años eh, este problema de la lluvia? No dura dos, tres años que no, no suficiente lluvia. Se pone como la carretera en el No hay comida, no hay ingresos, no, no, vacas y todo, y barrer agua y comprar pastura y todo eso. Cuando todo está bueno, pura vida. A, 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 ahora en este momento el gobierno de Andrés López Obrador, personas más de 65, uh, mensual uh, dinero o no? Hey. So, so every month, like for the older people, the government actually gives them like kind of like welfare, or for the older people they get money to buy food. And and ¿cuál es de esta mensual es cuatro mil, cinco mil cuánto es? No, cada vez es cuatro mil. Cada dos meses. So, so each, uh, each, each, uh, uh, so each uh, two months they get uh, 4,000 pesos, which is about 2,000 a month. Okay. And that's about 120 bucks a month. Nice. Uh, they get from the government to like just uh, eat and yeah. to, 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 to subsidize, exactly. Um, like, um, ah, lo mismo pregunta para usted. La, la vida es mejor ahora o mejor antes aquí? ¿Por qué? Pues como que todo, todo lo que el gobierno da poquito ayuda. Te digo yo que tenemos carretera, el camino, tenemos agua, tenemos luz. Luz, todo. Cuando yo estaba, quién sabe, 15, 20 años, no había luz, no había caminos, hay, no había trocas, pero guayeres. La rucha con un one horse, guayen, Go to the town, to the bus, to the... ¿Y, ¿Y hasta cuántos años uh, el nacimiento uh, es mejor? ¿Tiene carretera, tiene escuela, tiene... Uh, Como 20 años. Como 20 años. Esta carretera es 20 años. So, okay, so th the life is better now. The question I ask is, right. is the life better before or is the life better now? Right. The life is better now because they have, they have cars, they have a road, they have water, they have uh, electricity in their homes. So they, have, they also have government help. Uh, so, and this has been going on for like the last 20, 30 years, the last 20, 30 years, things have uh, improved. But before, people would, would be on these horses. That's why there's a horse culture. Oh, that was the form of transportation to go from one place to uh, the other. It was necessary. It was necessary. Yeah. And in the time of the Antes, Caballo, Dario. Hey, you know, you're my sister. Hey, you're my sister. Yes, you're my sister. Yes, <laughs> this lady does not like to be on video. Okay, okay. Sorry. Es tu hermana. Elsa también es tu hermana. Y de otra es tu hermana. Rosa. Son tres hermanas. Rosa, sí. Elsa y Mari. Sí. Pero solo usted casado con una morena. Una morena. Solo usted. Sí. Eran los tres hermanos. Sí. Y dos están casados con gente blanca. Oh, 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 oh. So he's the only person that has decided to procreate with a uh, black woman. Okay. His sister decided to marry a Mexican, right. and the grand and those children are also marrying local Mexicans. Make sure you check out this brother Hershey's like, YouTube, YouTube channel. He's anymore. been traveling around Latin like America him. by that, motorbike. He's a real okay. where, where, adventurer. Where they actually look, uh, black. He's doing YouTube in a way that very his, few uh, are brave enough to do. And it was a privilege to chop yeah, it up not, and spend time talking with him. Lives on the other side, yeah. and they they're coming to visit each other. You know, like one of the things one of the things that's missing in Costa Chica yeah. is that a lot of people in Costa Chica when you go back to Oaxaca and Guerrero right. and meet those black people there a lot of them have family in North Carolina uh, everywhere you go in North Carolina rally in Charlotte Winston-Salem that's where most of the black Mexicans are actually yes 100% so one interesting fact I just learned here is uh, talking with these guys is they're, they're uh, their own tribe he was explaining that to me. Come on. He was explaining to me how, you know, these guys are their own tribe. They call the tribo uh, mascones de negros. See? And with that, you got a lot of, um, they have their own section in the government on paper that they're a tribe, on the identification that they're on tribe. And this land here is communal land. There's no, no titles, nothing like that. No private ownership of land. They own the land. They make the rules. Police can't just come through here for no good reason. Like they, they police, they do their own community policing. So they have a say like that. They're almost like their own, I would say maybe like uh, Native American tribes. Yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. The, 
the tribe, the, the land in the U.S. Yeah, really like but, that. But it's not that strict. Okay. Because the Kickapoo is right down the, towards the end of the road. Right. Now you can't even you you can't even take a photo. They have okay. the sign that says no, no photos. photos. Okay. Like so we'll respect that. We won't be doing that there. But but if you know someone like these dudes here, right, right. they can go win. Ah, gotcha. But can they give you the okay to video? You can video when you get past the checkpoint. See, yeah, but, but then you put it up on YouTube and then it's like, you know, they be pissed off at you later on. So I don't want that drama, you know? Exactly. Yeah. But, but the Kickapoos, that's, I mean, that's to me, that, that's the story there too. Like, right. that's the big story. The Kickapoos, they're richer than these people. Right. Because they're Americans. Like, they got, they got their dual nationalities. Right. These people are not. Gotcha. But there's still like a lot of American influence that's uh, coming in. Like a lot of these people you see, they're from right. America. Like that's a that's a straight up African American dude, but he's yeah. from here. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things, but they, yeah. they're a tribe, yep. and they have like certain protections. Okay. Um, and yes, the land. Yeah. Now, if someone needs land here, the way they go about it, if, if someone needs land, mm -hmm. the way they go about it is uh, they ask for it. Get they ask for the land. Yeah. No, you in there with them. Ah, they, they, they ask for the land. They ask for the land. They say, hey, I need to use this. I got to do something. And they, the community comes together and they say, like, all right, we give it to him. But no one is buying land. No one is selling land because no one has titles. No, it's not like it's a tribal land. So, like, my idea is, like, how much is land here? I want to live here. And the thing is, like, so you might be wondering, like, hey, I, I want to live amongst these black people. If, if, if you're cool with them and if you get to know the community, they might give you land for free. Okay. But you only have access to the land they give you. Got to. You can't go around, like, like they can go around wherever they want. They can right. sleep here and nobody can mess with them. Right. But you can't sleep here. You can only, like, be out where they... Told you you could be. Yeah, that's your land. Got to. Or, or that's the, what they're giving you. Right, right. But you can't be around the lake doing whatever you want uh, without their permission. But they can be wherever they want. Like, George, he can be doing, like, whatever he wants. Right. Because this belongs to, like, his tribe. Okay. But there's people that do live in the community right. that are not part of like the Muskogos, yep. but they were given land. They were given like, hey, here's your uh, 50 by 50 meters, which is, which is huge. Okay. That's a lot of land, 50 meters by 50 meters. Yep. Uh, and they're like, hey, this is what you can be, but you're not, just so you know, you're not part of the tribe. Okay. So you can't, you're not like one of us, you're part of the community, but you're not one of us. And so, so, so these are the descendants of african-american slaves that ran away yeah. and escaped to mexico to escape slavery right so the question is like the identity question which is like eres is mexicano or eres is afro-americano porque hasta ahora eres es negro y tiene de sangre de juan caballo y de el amigos de él entonces eres es de afro-americano or mexicano quien es Si yo leo a los gringos, yo les quiero decir que soy afroamericano. Okay. Pero me van a decir, where you from? You speak English. I don't speak English. Pero, pero, usted es afroamericano. Porque tus descendientes es mi, mi gente. Mi papá sí. es American citizen. Ok. Mi madre. ¿Y tu papá? Ok. Pero usted es afroamericano. ¿O oh, sí? ¿Por qué? Yo puedo, porque cuando la amistía hace 30 y algo de años, yo pude arreglar para allá. Y por eso voy y ve. Pero si yo no puedo hacer ese presente, ese, y... yo me dije, sí, 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 y bla, 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 ya no puedo, no, 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 mucho inglés y... no, 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 <laughs> All right, so we're wrapping up here. The festivals for today. It was cool. It was a good thing to see. Talk with some different people. Showed you a lot of stuff. I had never been to an event like this. I've seen it on YouTube before, but never experienced one myself. And this one, you know, you had a real family vibe to it. It was, you know, dudes coming up calling you cousin, you know, primo. Um, and people just, you know, being themselves, coming up to you real friendly, uh, willing to share stuff with you. Nobody, almost nobody, was camera shy in that way where you couldn't take video. Um, as soon as I flew the drone, the kids came out, they did their thing, and it was just cool to see. It's a cool vibe. It was a lot hotter early in the day. Now, the temperature's down. You can see the sky's about to rain and everything, but it's cooling off. It's a more manageable temperature. So I'm, I'm feeling that. But yeah, this was a good time out here and I, I, I really appreciated it. Hospitality, everybody showed us, still showing us. I'm out here with the camera. You know, nobody's, you know, they, it's all smiles. So, and I appreciate that a lot. The kids on horses, 
that still got me a little uh I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm like their biggest fan out here. Kids on horses, cause it seems like a big animal for a little person to be in control of. Good stuff. All right. Well, that was our day to day. We'll see if we do something at night. Probably gonna stick around. Out of the, the temperatures, way more manageable. It feels like a good 75 degrees right now, which I'm feeling. Uh, earlier in the day, I think it was 106, which is crazy. But anyway, that was our wrap up here today and, uh, yeah stay tuned for the next one if you have it check out some of my other videos we're always doing something we're always in some place showing something uh, show us something new something a little different that you don't typically see every day so if you appreciate it tune in watch watch the other stuff